The infrared spectrometer is a very useful tool in analyzing the purity of your sample and also deducing the identity of an unknown compound. IR spectroscopy measures the amount of light, in particular the light from the IR region that is transmitted through the sample. The IR spectrometers in the organic laboratory operate by a technique called attenuated total reflectance, or ATR. This modern technique allows for rapid sampling of samples. The principle of this technique is that an IR beam is shot through the ATR crystal and through internal reflection, the beam will eventually exit through the other side of the crystal. When a sample is placed on top of and in intimate contact with the crystal, then the IR beam that is shot through will enter into the sample slightly before reflecting back into the crystal. What the instrument measures is the amount of IR light absorbed by the sample. This video will give you a general overview of how an IR spectrum is collected. For instructions of each instrument, consult your lab manual. The first step is to load the sample. For solid samples, the sample is placed on the ATR cell and then it is crushed on the crystal surface by a pressure tower. With the broker instrument, the clip is pulled forward and down until you hear a click, which symbolizes that the pressure tower is locked in place. For the Agilent instrument, a knob will have to be turned to allow the pressure tower to come down over the sample. Stop turning on the knob when you feel resistance in the knob. For liquid samples, only a small amount of liquid will need to be placed on the crystal and there is no need to lower the pressing clips since gravity will hold the liquid in close contact over the crystal. If the ATR crystal does not have enough sample covering it, you will end up with a noisy spectrum, which means it will look hairy. In such a case, you should release the pressure tower and then press the sample around the surface to ensure there is adequate coverage and then measure again. At the start of data collection, you want to put a sample name which reflects the identity of the sample as well as your name. Once your data has been generated, you will need to select the peaks of interest. Be careful of selecting too many peaks because it will give you a very cluttered spectrum. Be sure to save your file in PDF form under the appropriate lab section folder and do not close the program. Lastly, remember to clean the platform with isopropanol and Kim wipes. The quality of the spectrum is indicated by the clarity and intensity of the bands. Common functional groups have designated frequency and intensity. Refer to your lab manual for a more comprehensive list. It is important to note that the strength of the peaks are relative to one another. A strong intensity does not necessarily mean it will reach the bottom of the spectrum, but rather it is strong in comparison to other peaks. An important concept to note is that the spectrum collected reflects the sample analyzed. So if the sample is contaminated, the presence of contamination will be represented as additional signals that overlap. Always be on the lookout for contaminants. To conclude this video, you learn about and watch the demonstration of the four steps to recording an IR spectrum for a compound. Loading of the sample, collecting the data, analyzing the data, and finally how to save the data. Be sure to be familiar with IR spectroscopic analysis, that is, what bands are you looking for and what the wave numbers represents, because it will save you a lot of time in the end. <music>